Hello, this is Chala Dinkoy, CEO and founder of The Repositioning Experts. I'm here with another episode of Polish My Pitch. Welcome, Angela Profit. Thank you so much for having me today. I am thrilled. All right. So, Angela, you know what we do here on Polish My Pitch. I would love to hear your elevator pitch, and I will start the five minute timer so that that's how long we have to polish it. So, hit me with it. Pretend that I'm a prospect that you're meeting at a Zoom meeting or a networking meeting. And then if I ask you, what is it that you do, Angela, then what do you say? Got it. Sounds great. You tell me when to go. <laughs> oh, it's I've already started. Oh, gotcha. Okay, ready? Well, what do I do? If you're an entrepreneur and you constantly feel distracted and you need to get clear on how to spend your time in your business, I'm Angela Profit. I'm the founder of GSD Creative. We help business leaders GSD, that is get shit done with the four P's. That's people, processes, productivity, and profit. You can check out my free video series at gsdsecrets.com that will show you how to get started being more productive. Okay, wonderful. Uh, is it okay? Do I have your permission to polish? Oh, absolutely. Okay, so there's a lot that's that's uh, good in it. Um, and, you know, I always talk about 70% of humans purchase based on pain. So you're talking about pain. Uh, you're talking to a very specific uh, group of people who is a target, which are entrepreneurs, and there is a call to action. So um, the way that I would tighten this up is to talk about the actual cost of the pain, the actual pain of feeling distracted. So um, what is the actual pain? And you talk, and the other point is I'd love to tighten it up around one of these people process um, productivity and profit because there are companies who are specialized in each of them. And so jack of all trades, master of none is usually my motto. So let's talk about of those, of the people process um, pr uh, profit and what was it, pr product? People process? Yeah, so there's people, processes, productivity, and then profit. Okay, so of the four, um, which is the most expensive problem that pops up when people get distracted? Uh, the most expensive problem is people. Okay. And what is the problem that happens? Noise, distractions, emails, buzzes. And if companies invest in educating their people to make sure that their computers and their phones are set up correctly with the notifications that are appropriate for their job so that they can actually focus, then the productivity goes up tremendously when companies invest in making sure that their people have the tools that they, that they have, that they need to be the most productive that they can be. Okay, so that's a productivity issue that you outlined, but you said that people was the number one issue. So people meaning HR, right? People oh, absolutely. Are, they're not engaged. So uh, is productivity the bigger, most expensive issue or is people the bigger issue? Well, in terms of expensive to me and, and just in my businesses, the most expensive, the, where we invest our money and our time is in people. So when you spend the money to develop people the way that you want them to work in a productive manner. The outcome is productivity. The problem is people are distracted. And so how do we figure out? And really for us, I, with our four steps and the four Ps, is we go in and do a psychology methodology called True Colors. And there's four different personalities. And we actually break out, once we understand and we, we it's like a fun activity I don't like to call it a, a psychology test or anything because there's no right or wrong but you definitely have different personalities so once you know the personalities of your people then you can customize the message the way they need to hear it so they can buy into whatever you're trying to help them or give them tools so that they 
can actually be more productive because the way that you say it to one personality, a different personality needs to hear it differently to buy into the, 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 the widget or the tool or whatever you're giving people to be more productive. Right. But the end, uh, goal and the end result and the expensive problem is productivity at the end of the day. Like it doesn't matter if you get to it through processes or people or profitability, the, the end result is productivity. So what is productivity in different, um, industries? So the different industries have different measures of productivity. So name an industry that you'd like to double your business in. So for instance, we specifically focus on the creative industry in the hospitality market. Um, that's my background. And so for, even if you, if you take it down to, um, a, a restaurant, a kitchen that does catering, for example, mm -hmm. and if you put, and there's four personality types that we teach in the True Colors personality type. And so like the golds are type A, the blues are driven by emotion, the greens are driven by numbers, research, and analytics, and the oranges, typically the, the, they're the life of the party. They're the marketing people. They're wanting to make sure everybody's having fun. And so if you have 13 minutes to plate 500 plates of food and get it out to 500 people because that's what the timeline says you would want to pick a person you would want to pick a gold person to make sure that they because they understand deadlines they work really well under pressure you would not want to put an orange in the front of the line making sure that everything is happening because oranges don't think they're, that they're not working at their best if they were put in a situation like that and so productivity, I mean, again, it, it comes all down to, it really does depend on what industry you're in, but the overall methodology can work for any type of industry once you understand your people and what their needs are so they can best thrive. Understood. Yeah. So let's take, and, and the reason why I keep pushing to an industry is because the methodology that I teach is called super niching. So it's getting your elevator pitch to be a hook into a meeting and then cross selling everything else. So the meeting makes sense only if they can hear that you're a specialist in their industry. And to your point, every industry has different pain. And just like a dentist can help any human with their teeth, you can help any business with their people, but it's not, it, it's a very difficult way to market, to focus and to sell yourself. So that's why I, let's say it is the restaurant since that is your background, although I'm not sure that that would be the best super niche today in the COVID world. Right. Let's say, uh, so, you know, a lot of my clients are re-niching during this time. So let's say it is the restaurant. What is the, uh, the, uh, mark of productivity for them? Is it, uh, number of tables that are served? Is it profitability per night? What is their measure of productivity? Well, so specifically I was in the, um, the luxury hospitality market and so doing really large events and luxury weddings. And so that's more my specialty, but it can apply to a restaurant as well. And it's more when, for example, if we have a luxury wedding and we have 12 hours to load in for an event and we have a go time and it's a seated dinner and it's an hour long ceremony and then we have a seated dinner and that dinner has to go out on time because it's let's say it's a dual entree filet mignon and salmon and the quality of the food is important and so if those don't go out in time a lot suffers and then people complain because their food is cold and then we can't start the first dance and then we can't start the cake cutting it's like a domino effect in the event world and so, which, which is where I came from, which is my background. And, but for example, what restaurants are doing right now in terms of pivoting for COVID, like our main caterer, they also had a restaurant, which is two very different things, but something that they've done from a productivity perspective is investing in new software. And now all of their orders, they're all to go orders or delivery orders because people still are not able to come into restaurants. Now, some restaurants, you know, they've completely just halted and applied for PPP and EIDL, but 
the one that I'm most familiar with is they were able to get a new software, but most importantly is making sure the right people are there to execute. So for example, having the right personality to install it and then to train everyone and they break everybody out by people and their personality. So who's going to be the best at this? So all the way down from who's taking the phone calls, who's checking the internet, who they're on Postmates and you know, all, all the delivery apps. And so you've got to have certain types of people in taking those orders, getting them into the kitchen, packaging all the stuff, because this is all new for them. They, they didn't used to do this. And so making sure that you put the right personalities and the right people in place. So for example, if you put an orange in charge of all of that, implementing the software, training people how to use it, taking the orders, making sure things get packaged so that there's no waste and then getting them out the door and then also making sure that the food is delivered and it's still hot. Um, that probably wouldn't be the, the best outcome if, if a certain type of person or people were not in charge of making sure that they were productive. Okay. So I have crafted an elevator pitch for you based on this new pivot. Yay. Um, and the way to, to sort of sex up the elevator pitch is to put a pain statistic into it because it makes people think that they're not the only loser and everybody else is in the same problem. So, and you would have to find out what this statistic is, but I just made it up. Four out of five restaurants don't get reorders because of delayed delivery. What we do is make sure that the right people are in the right jobs so that every delivery is on time, which results in a repeat of orders every time. Love it. I just made that up. So do you see how it's totally so different than what you started with this huge BMF mm -hmm. and then cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it and fine lasered it into this one industry. And if I could dream, we know if we were working together, your marketing would be constantly in front of restaurant owners, constantly. It would be like seven to 12 touches. So that's all your world would be. You would be in their world and nothing else. And then they, it would be word of mouth. It would be all your information would be like wildfire. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. It's funny. Cause we used to be for 20 years, I was in specifically the luxury wedding market and, and then events. And over the past five years, we have pivoted out of a niche market completely. Um, and we're just helping entrepreneurs that, and, and so there's lots of different industries we work on, but a lot of that come, it does come from word of mouth and it comes from being in, um, like I'm in EO, which is the entrepreneurship organization. I've been in it since 2010. And so, because I've been very involved with the board and then networking with the right people and being around the right people, they know me. And so they know the outcomes and the, and the bottom line, which is profit, how that has impacted their business. And so it very much does come from word of mouth. Um, but because I'm surrounded by a lot of members that are in EO, most of them say, you know, we're entrepreneurs. They don't really say like, oh, we're in this industry or this industry or in this industry. And so it, it, for someone that's like brand new getting started, absolutely. Like that really helped me build my company over 20 years and like only talking about luxury weddings, period. Um, but then, you know, as I've gotten older and then expanded our services for us, um, you know, talking more to entrepreneurs, but from a marketing perspective, absolutely. Like it caught it, it even caused a lot of confusion with our uh, audience who didn't know us very well because they were like, wait, you do weddings, but then you also own a productivity company. <laughs> so, I mean, the, the two directly correlate. And then we had a five-year plan to really retire out of the, of doing the events and acting more of a productivity, productivity consultant to the creative and hospitality industry. Cause they're so creative and they're amazing, but they are not good business owners. <laughs> So yeah. that's, that's really what we love to do is, is creativity. Well, for, for companies like yours that are scaling and scaled, what, uh, what we do is we create sub brands for them. So the sub brands are, they own different, um, industries. So then you would have a sub brand of productivity for weddings. You would have a sub brand of productivity for, uh, entrepreneurs again is too wide. And now I understand that your immediate natural network was the network that you were in. And that's totally great. But, and if you're getting enough clients in that, that's it. You don't need to change a thing. 
But mostly people come to me and they want to polish their elevator pitch because they want more business. And in order to have more business, they have to have a really clear direction, very specific niche, and then a very, very costly problem that they solve that's very specific because productivity is like huge. Because like to your point, it could be the people, it could be the processes, it could be the everything, right? So anyway, you have been polished. Yay, thank you so much. Thank you, all the best.